Hi, I'm Bob Zimmer, Member of Parliament, today with Jill Steele in North Vancouver. You can see behind us the iconic Lionsgate Bridge here in Vancouver. Uh, we're going to talk about the public fishery today. So, Jill, it's nice to have you here today. Beautiful day. Uh, how did you first get involved with fishing? So, my dad owns Highwater Tackle in North Vancouver, and he's owned that for the last... 33 years. Uh, we just own the tackle store and he's been very heavily involved with a lot of fisheries and just yeah. getting into sport fishing and either bringing people in or fighting for our sport fishery as well. Uh, one thing that we've heard and we've seen the minister, there's been some closures in certain respects to different rivers based on uh, you know, population declines and we're concerned about those population declines but we know there's, there's fish out there to catch too and We've seen certain record runs in certain species of salmon. So maybe just for the viewer's sake, is there salmon today that we can catch? Absolutely. There is salmon that are out in our local waters here. There are salmon in the rivers. We are seeing certain issues with uh, fisheries or runs that are um, in stress or in decline. However, we have a hatchery fishery that is very prolific and does work. And there are fish out here that we can target that are here for us to catch and to keep. Right. And I know, again, we talked about this before too, but we know there's 40 million hatchery fish from Canada on the Canadian side and there's another 70 million that come up into our waters from Washington State. Uh, the difference is, and maybe you, you speak to the differences between those two and because I, I think what would be very helpful some of uh, what we need to do in Canada is to clip our or mark our fish, uh, like Washington. Maybe explain what that process is. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, in the US, and actually for certain species that we have here in British Columbia, uh, fish that are born and raised in hatcheries are adipose fin clipped, or the caudal fin on the back is removed at birth to identify that that fish was born and raised in a hatchery. Right. Uh, we do that with all of our coho salmon here. And for instance, uh, locally around the lower mainland, you can only retain hatchery coho. Now for our Chinook, we don't do that for all of them. We only right. do that for about five to 10%, depending on the hatchery facility mm -hmm. that's operating. So there is a large portion of, of hatchery Chinook out there that cannot be identified from wild populations. Right. So even though they're there, we can't tell them apart from maybe populations that are at risk. Yeah. Right, and I think, you know, we talked about this before too, but uh, for the person that, you know, uh, we want to protect some of those wild stocks that are threatened. And we talked about too how hatchery fish, how it can really help those wild stocks that are at risk. Maybe just explain how that works. Yeah, the idea with hatchery uh, fish specifically is that it would take the pressure off wild populations. So right. if you have anglers that are A, only allowed to keep hatchery marked fish, so there would have to be a way to determine that those are hatchery in a say yeah. marked select fishery, uh, then all the wild fish would go back or there would be less pressure on wild fish as well. Uh, they can determine a little bit too about where those stocks of concern specifically migrate or where they're generally located. Right. So there could be areas that could be managed differently as well. But that mark select fishery is really something that needs to be rectified with having a fully marked Chinook population. What can be done now, uh, Jill? Yeah, and I think fighting, continuing to fight for the rights of public fisheries is extremely important. Uh, this is a resource that is all of ours. It's all Canadians' resource. And I want that to be available for my children's children. Yeah. And so this is not a short-term fix, tomorrow fix, open it this season fix. Right. This is a long-term uh, future investment that has to be made in Canadians' public fisheries. And more importantly, we have to think about this outside of um, you know, political terms and things like right. that. This has to be long term, not every four years. So we have to start making decisions, not based on four years from now, but right. based on 30 years from now. Because once again, whether my children choose to fish or not, yeah. that has to be available to them in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I just want to thank you, Jill, for taking the time today and coming down here. Uh, to talk about the public fishery and salmon. I think a lot of us are concerned about the, the, the declines in stocks. You're actually doing the conservation. And my big concern is if we lose people like you because there's no more public fishery, that we won't have conservation any longer too. Because that's the fact of the matter is that the people that fish and are the anglers and fishers in BC, they're the ones that are actually doing salmon restoration in our province. Maybe just uh, comment on that. Absolutely. I think it's such an 
maybe an undervalued resource in a lot of ways. There's so much volunteerism that goes on between anglers, shop owners, guides who donate, you know, hundreds of hours and, you know, thousands of dollars back into this resource. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, shops, for instance, that, you know, they, they make a living off this industry, but they're giving back and they want it to be here, not for reasons because they want to make a dollar, but because right. they genuinely care. It'll be just something that's part of our heritage and our history. So. Again, Jill, I just want to thank you for coming down today. The sun's coming out, which is beautiful. Uh, again, we have beautiful uh, ocean behind us. Uh, but just want to thank you. Keep up the good work. And uh, we will see you again soon. Like so many British Columbians, some of my favorite memories are fishing with my family. If you believe the minister needs to start listening to the concerns of our BC fishing families and communities, I encourage you to call her at her office at 902-527-5655 or send an email to bernadette.jordan at parl.gc.ca. We must ensure that our children and our grandchildren have the opportunity to enjoy the great outdoors and participate in an angling tradition that has been a proud way of life for generations.